Hey guys, welcome to Versus Scale. So you know me, I don't get easily excited, but this plugin that was suggested by one of our community members has officially blown my mind. And what I like about it is that the applications and the use cases are almost limitless and they are only limited by your imagination. So that's always a good sign. So the plugin in question that we're going to talk about today is called harpa.ai. And basically what it does allows you to use your chat GBD whenever you're browsing internet and using different documents. And also it allows you to parse or fetch data, extract data from the documents. So those two things are extremely powerful. And harpa.ai also serves as a prompt library. So you can store your prompts and you can choose between different uh, Pretty good prompts actually that they have already. So this is going to be a full-on tutorial. Uh, I won't be showing you how to install the plugin. I think you will manage, but I will show you different use cases that I'll be using for sure. So those are vetted by me and are going to be used by me. So first, let's try with something simple. Let's use our famous CanDocs eat long an example. So this is the page and this is the Harper plugin. So the first thing that we'll do is that we'll try to summarize this article and just uh, imagine that this is not about dogs and this is about some scientific stuff and you need to get the gist of it. So the way it works, you just go summarize and you can choose this thing here which is page and this way Harper knows that you need to summarize uh, the page and yeah <laughs> so we need to pass check and this check being your ChatGPT account so and sometimes it will log off and it will require you to log in a few times during the usage but that's no biggie and that's it so you got a perfect summary and the same goes actually for YouTube videos. So if I went on YouTube and let's just say I want to know what this video is about, which is by, my, by Matt Wolf, who is talking about the latest AI news. And I don't have time to go through the whole video. And what I can do, I can click backslash. And this is the commands library. So you can go YouTube. And here we have a YouTube video summary. So we'll click that. And this is actually the summary, a very well written summary. So we have news about open assistance, truth GPD. This is the long Elon Musk initiative about fact checking the results of the GPD models. We have virtual reality, we have Adobe and DaVinci, we have Nvidia and stable LMs, stability AI and whatnot. So this is a very good summary of the video. So if you don't have time, you can just summarize everything in a very bite-sized manner. Let's head back to our article in question. So what else you can do is um, that you can outline the article. And the, the actually Harper AI does a very good job at that. So generate an outline. And this is an outline and it follows the article to the T and it even creates some subsections. So can dogs eat long end, health benefits, why can long end be bad for dogs, how to feed long end, are dogs allergic, how to do, what to do if your dog eats long end, can diabetic dogs eat long end, and final verdict. And just so we know, this is accurate, this is the actual outline. So. And uh, it basically copied this outline and it expanded upon this outline. And what can, you can obviously do is say, write an article based on the above outline. And I'm butchering the spelling and people keep commenting on my spelling. And thankfully, GPT 3.5 doesn't care about my spelling. It understands me perfectly. So we just got an article based on that we can copy based on the outline. And if you go to the settings, you can choose between different uh, models. You can choose GPT-4, which I will not, at least for now, 
because it slows down the whole process. You can use Turbo, you can use Legacy, and uh, yeah. So you, you can uh, pick and choose your model of choice depending on the task at hand. Now let's do something else. So let's go to Amazon. And so what you can do now is go to Harper again and uh, tell it to create a comparison table with name, price, specifications, and, and reviews. And just in case we'll say this is the page that we want to do that with. And here, here we go. This is a beautiful looking table, which is taking the information on the page right now. So this is the first miner, which is M2 Pro. The second one is Ledger Nano X, which is not a miner, but it doesn't matter. So it basically works with the whatever is on the page. And it is your responsibility to make the page display what you want. So it still followed our command. Then also what you can do, let's say we're interested in this miner here. You can go to Harper and you can extract data from the page in a table format. So we'll go data. And now we are getting all of these data in a table format, very neat. So this is a very quick way of creating um, review summaries in a table format. So product name, brand, price, item dimensions, weight, energy consumption, and everything in between. And this is a perfect example. So we just uh, talked about the summaries, then about the outlines, and now we are talking about the summary table. So you can do it with multiple products, or you can do that with a single product. Now let's do something very interesting. So say we're interested in manifestation. So how, how to manifest a car. What we can do now, and this is the page displaying the top 10 results. We can go to Harpa and ask it to grab top 10 titles from the page. And these are the top 10 titles. So very easy. And let's just double check that the first title was how to manifest a new car. Millennial Grinds, and this is the first one. The second one is How to Manifest a New Car in Five Easy Steps, and that's the second one. So this is the correct information. And you can use that as your reference. You can feed it back to ChatGPT, and you can say, based on the above, write a new and engaging... Well, well, let's just say that. Based on the above, write an engaging title under... 60 characters. Drive your dreams, five steps to manifesting cars. I'm not sure if it's something that uh, you will be using, but obviously you can edit the prompt and ask it to write 10 titles, 20, and whatever. So this is very neat. Also, following the same example, you can go grab top 10 URL from, and here you can use the actual search query. So for those of you playing at home, you can take notes, grab top 10 URLs from how to manifest a car. Just in case we'll say page. And sometimes it gets wonky. So sometimes you just uh, want something, but it doesn't do that. Let's just try GBD4. Grab top 10 URLs from the page mm -hmm. and now it's working <laughs> I'm not sure if it's the GPT-4 that did the trick or what but sometimes yeah sometimes it says I'm an AI model and I don't want to do that but it just takes a few tries so this again a very neat information you get the uh, name of the domain and then the URL. So if you're collecting some information about your competitors, you can feed that to an Excel sheet. 
using the titles, using the URLs. And now what you can do is grab Morse rating for the above URLs. And now it's doing that. Beautiful. So the Millennial Grind is uh, DA of 32. This is 32. The second one is Mental Style Project DA of 18. This is 18. And be mindful of that Harper AI is going to grab everything that is on the page. And I have a Moz bar installed as well as keywords everywhere that allow me to see this information here. For this to happen, you need to have something to display the most rating. But again, this is extremely helpful. If you are collecting or compiling a list of your competitors, you can just grab the URLs, grab the title, grab the most rating and store it in your Excel or Google Sheets for further analytics. Now say you are interested in one of the articles and you want to know what keywords they're using and you don't want to spend a lot of money on stuff like Surfer SEO and Neural Writer. So what you can do is go to Harper AI once again. You go to, you uh, click backslash and this opens up the commands library, which, which is split into productivity, control, marketing, copywriting, and you can just go LSI. And this is a command that extracts OSI keywords from the page. And it says either paste the content or the uh, chat GPT is going to use whatever is displayed. So we'll just go, go. And look what it's doing. So it's collecting keywords. It is analyzing density. And I don't want to sign up for an email. Sorry. So this is something that you can use in your further testing. And if you want to copy whatever your competition is doing, but you don't want to invest into Surface SEO and NeuroWriter, this is one of the cooler ways to collect the AOSI keywords from your competitors. Another user case, <laughs> I'm feeling like I'm, I'm um, doing too much. Let's just go and uh, go to one of my sites, which I don't update that often. And this is like a uh, site just to be associated with the YouTube. I'm not actually posting on it. Uh, this is the worst at scale, obviously the site that I own and you can go to the sitemap. And as you can see, I don't have that many topics. Uh, I don't have that many posts, but let's just assume this is a sitemap of your competitor with hundreds of posts. So what you can do is go extract URLs and turn slugs into keywords. And it's basically what it's doing. It's analyzing the URLs and converting them into keywords or titles, however you want to see this. And I think this is amazing. I mean, the Potential of this technology is almost limitless. Okay, let's just stop it. I think this is... Uh... And again, what you can do is to please organize the following keywords into five groups, so, but we don't have that many keywords, so let's just say three groups. And just imagine this is a sitemap of a uh, larger website. So see what it's doing. It's taking the URL, so the keywords in question, and organizing them into three separate groups. So you can basically do parasitic SEO. You can go to a website with a large sitemap. You can convert all the URLs and slugs into keywords and you can recreate their topical map. Easy as. So now let's get back to our safer doc example. And I want to show you how to store different commands. So I recently did an article which reviewed a lot of tools, like dozens of tools. So what I did, I went to um, create a command. I then created my command. I uh, basically just gave it a command, a name, and then described the command. And now, whenever I click on the backslash, I get this command here at the top, which is my commands, which is called short summary. And the command basically says uh, summarize in one sentence. 
and uh, uh, in that particular example I needed a lot of summaries and I didn't want didn't want them to be long so I just used these commands to speed up my process and yeah you can go to an about page you can go to OVA2 and basically create those one uh, sentence punchy summaries for your uh, information for your blogging purposes. So another very neat example of how you can use Harper AI and we'll use Matt Wolf again, sorry Matt, but your channel is just amazing. So you can go to Harper, you can go to commands and let's type YouTube and there is a lot of to choose from. So you have the audience analyzer which is I will provide you with a transcript of a YouTube video and then it will make assumptions about the um, audience. So it's very similar to what I was doing with commands, but this is doing the same, but with the transcript. The target audience for this video is people who are interested in artificial intelligence, machine learning, and technological advancements. These individuals are likely to be tech enthusiasts, um, relevant topics, open source AI, AI advancements, AI applications, AI research, AI ethics, so again, based on your video or video of your comparators, you can make assumptions about the audience and what their topics of interest can be. This is extremely helpful, especially for those of you who are liking the concept of leading indicators and are not looking at the past, but are willing to get in front of, uh, ahead of the herd and get the topics that are underserved. And uh, for those of you playing at home, again, another amazing opportunity, which is YouTube polls. And I'm not sure about the SEO value per se, but I think this is something very interesting. Uh, where is it? Uh, yeah, YouTube poll generator. So it works with description pages of a YouTube video, but it does work with uh, videos themselves. So you can basically uh, create a poll uh, based on these contents and you know how some YouTubers are creating community posts to promote their YouTube videos. So you can, uh, you can use that. For example, if I was mad and my video didn't do well, <laughs> which doesn't happen, but I could create a community post saying that uh, select the AI topic that interests you, machine learning, deep learning, AI tools, and uh, I would have for example, uh, this URL down below. This is a very neat way of how you can interact with your target audience more. And the last example is the spy component. And I think we spy it quite a lot with different prompts, but say, and I have this in my business. So I have a few websites, which I'm, we are switching back and forth between from place one and two. And some days I'm on the top and the other days I'm second and say I'm very interested in what is actually happening with those posts, posts content-wise. And this is where the monitor feature comes in handy. You can monitor prices with this and different things like that. But say I'm competing with this guy here and I want to know whenever he is updating his content, I can create a custom monitor and monitor page updates and say uh, the trigger is going to be whenever the war account exceeds by more than 5%. And basically you set up this monitor, which I have already, and whenever there is a new content here, and again, the content say exceeds this 5% threshold, I will get notified immediately. And on the background, this tool here fetches the data uh, every three hours or so. And this is again, can be fully configured, but so this is an amazing way to spy your competition. So again, if you have an article that you want to beat and you're fighting for the same place on the service, basically, you need to know whenever the content is being updated. And this is a very cool way of doing that. So I, hopefully this video was helpful. <laughs> I think this has been jam-packed with value and different use cases. And I'm sure just with playing around with these two, you can immediately come up with 10 and 20 and other amazing use cases. Let me know which use cases you found most helpful or any of the use cases you've come up with since watching this video. Like, share, subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you next time.